Earlier in the presentation, I reminded you that everything that's going to happen in the next couple of years, from, from the time that you uh, set up your USDOT and MC and you went active, everything was going to happen uh, right back into here. So here we are again on the home screen of fmcsa.dot.gov. Click on registration tab. And if you scroll down here to, to where it says update your registration right here, this, guys, I'm trying to show you uh, where you're going to be making your changes if they do occur. And they do occur. You may have a name change. And I remember mentioning earlier, name changes are a domino effect. You don't just change it here. Um, it comes with a whole lot of other stuff like uh, following up with your EIN, follow, following up with articles, things of that nature. However... When you want to do a name change, right, or an address change, or uh, to reinstate if you've been re revoked, these are the forms. This is where you're going to go to get that settled for yourself, okay? Again, with the uh, routine updates or biannual updates, which will be required of you uh, to inactivate or deactivate, to reactivate your uh, DOT number, you're going to do that with these forms. But today, we're going to show you how to do uh, name changes and how easy it is to basically maneuver through this system. Okay, so here we are. Um, I clicked on that name change because I want to do a name change in your scenario. How do I change the company name for my motor carrier broker or freight forwarder operating authority? And that's the OP1 series, guys. You've heard people talk about that OP1. It gives you a few options. If you want to submit this by the online or the web form, and guys, this is where this is the handy dandy right here. A lot of people don't really do business uh, by fax. I mean, we still do business by fax, but if you don't have access to a fax machine and you don't want to wait for a snail mail, what you're going to use is the web form. This is a easy tool that they've given you, um, you motor carriers to be able to make changes uh, throughout their web system. And you can make a lot of changes through this web form. Okay, and for instance, in this scenario, we're going to do a name change. So let's just read here. Web form. If you would like to submit your name, our web form, legal trade name and are paying by credit card because there is a cost for a name change guys that's fourteen dollars if you were paying attention in that earlier presentation please upload a completed printed and signed mcsa 5889 form and that's the form you guys and there's a hyperlink here so we're going to go through that and click that hyperlink and and then to go to the web form okay let's just click We'll, we'll go back here, but let's click the web form and I'll show you exactly where they're, they're going to take you. This is their web form, okay? And so if you have any emails or if you want to chat with someone live, there's a wait time for this chat. There's also a wait time for the email. However, as you know, once you submit an email, the email happens instantly. However, when they retrieve that information, they retrieve it, retrieve it in the order it's been received, okay? So... And again, if you want to chat, of course, that's going to be a wait time too. If you have just some general questions, they're going to refer you back to the verbiage on the website. So if you click on the email, you're going to type in your email address. Those asterisks mean those are the required doc, required fields that needs to be inputted. First name, your last name. And then here, you're going to check, check which one um, pertains to your scenario. All right. Are you doing a biennial? It may not mean much to you right now, but as you go forward, this will mean everything to you because everyone is required to do a biennial update. Um, whatever scenario, if it's insurance you need to plug in, uh, drug and alcohol, any anything new interest, all of that, this is going to be uh, very pertinent to your safety audit here. Um, so all of this information is is there's drop line is is described so whatever fits you that's what you select but the one thing i wanted to point out is you can pretty much do everything through this web app form that they've made conveniently ready and available for you okay so once you select your inquiry type and then you type in a subject and then the question you have to put in a question even if you don't even even if you're saying well i'm submitting my biennial update you have to type something in the question box. 
And if you're attaching anything, of course, you'll choose file here and it'll set you up to continue. When you go to that next screen, um, it's going to ask you, do you want to submit? And you're going to say, yes, you want to submit. You want to continue to submit. Guys, this is a very hand handy tool that you will use to make the changes that, that are necessary and pertaining to your company. So this particular instance is, again, we, we, let's go back one click. Let's just start from the very beginning, the home screen. What we did is we wanted to um, we wanted to go on the registration tab because we wanted to update our registration. All right, so we scroll down here and this particular place, we want to do a name change. We want to do a name change and we want to submit it not online, not, not by fax or mail, but we want to submit this form by the web form because it's just convenient for us. Okay, and so what form do you need? to do the name change. Well, we need the MCSA 5889, and this is for a name change. All right, once you once you download that form, fill it out to the best of your ability, save it to your, your computer. Once you've saved it, go back into your web form, submit it, okay? And just real quick, it's a three-page document. You're gonna go over uh, the today's date, your fax, if you have a fax, email address, most people have their email address and they're going to click that email address there. Here you're going to type the legal name of your company. If you have a DBA, you'll type the DBA there. Your docket or your M slash MC number will go here. Your USDOT number will go there. Your MEX, M MX which stands for Mexico, number will go here. Your reference or RFC number here, and if you're a freight forwarder, that'll go there. Okay, and this is from these two fields are from Mexico only. You're gonna type in your address as it currently is in the FMCSA system. Okay, not the address that you're changing it to. This is where this is where it is currently at. Your city. Type in your state. There's a drop down list to choose from, and then zip code your phone number, and again, all of this information should be uh, as it's already in the FMCSA. For instance, if your phone number has changed, along with the address change, type in your previous existing phone number. Here you're gonna click the uh, current business number and current cell phone number, okay? The affiliations with FMCSA licensed entities or other applicants applying for USDOT registration do you currently have or have you had within the last three years of this date of application relationship involving common stock, common ownership, common management? Guys, in the previous pre presentation, when we actually went through the setup of your USDOT and MC, we talked about this, okay? And that answer was no. If that, if this is applicable to you, if you have relationships that involves common stock, common ownership, and then the answer for you is going to be yes. In our situation, it's no. And so you're going to click no there. Right here, you're going to repeat the same thing. Your USDOT number, your legal name. If there's a DBA, you'll put that there. And your current safety rating. All right. After that, you're going to, to type in your name, your full legal name, your title. And that's generally the owner. And then your handwritten signature here. OK, now this is where you actually type in the, ad the address change, the actual change that you're making. You'll, you'll type that in here. OK, this is good. This is real good, guys. I feel real good about this. So, again, you're getting your, you're getting your address change. This is just an address change. When you first started out, you were at one address. OK, a couple of a couple of presentations ago, we were at one address. And so now we're doing something different and, and I just need to make one minor change on my FMCSA portal. And so how do I do that? I go in here and I type in uh, MCSA 5889. If I know the form directly, that's the form number. If I don't, I go back through, go under registration updates, come here to this form, fill it out, knock it out. Let's knock it out. So the address change only, this is where you're going to put in the new address, the new city, the new state, and so forth and so forth. Keep going down. Here's a bonus for you. If you're doing a name change, same difference. 
the name changes, they have to be supported by what? By the articles of incorporation. You have to support it with documentation, okay? You can just say, oh, I have a name change. Doesn't work that way, guys. This is the way it works. You type in the new legal name. And if it's a new DBA, you type that in there. And of course, there's a charge for this, right? So I, I authorized the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration to do what? Charge $14 for what? To my credit card below for what? The name change. This is the administrative work. So they're caught, they're charging $14 to do this name change. Is the address address change a, a fee? No, it's not. The address change is gonna be free. So so you decided to 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 move when you first started this process, this 21 day process, guys. You keep pressing, keep pressing, you're doing great. You first started this 21 day process and, and you decided to go one address. Well, you move. Something happened, you have a different address. Okay, great. Go in there, change your address because you want all your paperwork to match. Boom. That's free. When you came over here to your name change, you're like, oh, wait, I decided on a different name. All right, what is that gonna cost me? 14 bucks, what do I need to do? Fill out the form MCS-5889. How do I, once I submit it, once I fill it out, where do I submit it? Through the web form that's made available to you. Once you save it, you're gonna save it to your desktop. You're gonna upload it into their system. You're gonna click submit. All right, here's a reinstatement. Okay, these are for those who already had authority and some 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 it fell back or or some some changes were made. However, it was revoked. Now you want to reinstate it. How do I reinstate it with the MCS 5889? This is where I go. I would like to reinstate the following authority. MC, broker, freight forwarder. Who are you? Are you the freight forwarder? Are you the broker? Are you the MC motor motor carry operating authority? Yes. Click there. If not, Keep going. You're the broker. If you're not the broker, you're the freight forwarder. Whatever applies to you. The bottom line is you want to reinstate your operating authority, and this is how you do it. MCSA 5889. Okay. Now, remember when we talked about when you're reinstating or you're doing any type of name change right here, name changes and reinstatements only is a charge. How much is it for a name change? $14. How do I know? It says it right here. Charge $14 to my credit card for a name change. Yes, because you decided to change your name. You're going to pay for it. For reinstatements, here it is. How much is it for reinstatements? It's 80 bucks. 80 bucks. So here you're going to put in, put in here your information. Okay, so you're going to type in your credit card number. And this is not a fillable field, so you're going to have to print this out. Type in your credit card number. Type in your name, name on the card, the bill and address the city. It, can, it doesn't have to be your particular card when it comes to the payment information. All you need to make sure is the person card is, is the same as the signature. Whoever signing, signing this part is the same as the person who represents this card. It doesn't have to be in your name. Click the date right here. If you're doing a name change, Click that box. If you're doing a reinstatement, click this box. If you're doing both, click both boxes and keep pressing forward. I commend you guys. Keep striving. These 21 days are going to go by so fast. However, one thing you're going to know, rest assured, you're going to be prepared. All right, guys. So we've basically um, got the information that we needed from that form. And we're getting ready to... into the system um into the web form system okay this is exciting this is exciting you guys i mean 21 days and counting so in between the time like i said we've made some changes you know we've set up one name or or we we had one previous address and we want to make that change um and we want to make that change in the system this is how we're going to make the change right here okay so you're going to type in um, an email address that you're familiar with, you know, the one that you work the most in. All right, so let me do that. And then I'm going to type in, um, you're going to type in your name. All right, and this is just for example purposes here. Um, if you have the DLT number, you want to put that DLT number in this slot here. 
So it'll be one. Okay, and then a phone number if you want to do that. You can put the phone number in there as well. So email address, first thing, last thing, phone number, and the DOT number just for reference. And in fact, see these asterisks means they're required. So anything after that isn't required. But if you just wanted to um, type in the MC number here, the motor carrier number, you can put that right there. It's no big deal. It's not required. Um, here you're going to type in, you're going to submit, click choose file, pull in the document you want to upload, answer. So they're going to list a, a similar type questions that have been asked before. If that's applicable to you, then you say my question is an answer. But what you're doing in this scenario, you're doing a name change or an address change or a revoke or a reinstatement. You're going to click finish submitting question. And this tab right here is what submits the form into the system.